Hi. Hi. I know it's been a while. Um, I've done quite a bit in here. Sorry for being very bad at getting videos updated, but I'm not kind of... I'm one of these people who goes around filming myself very often, so I find it difficult. But, on the plus side, as you can see, it's looking quite smart at the moment. I've got a few more bits and pieces to finish off. Uh, I've been living in here since January 2017, so I've now been living in here for the last year whilst I finished doing the build. Uh, I'm still parked on my uncle's, well, rather I've now moved onto my uncle's drive. Um, unfortunately he passed away in December 2016, but... Um, I've still got power, I can do lots of stuff, um, I've got the solar on the roof obviously but uh, in the winter time it's not quite enough so I need to increase the amount of solar I've got, um, but yeah, there you go, we're, uh, it's coming along nicely, we've got, as you can see, beautiful painting in the back, a load of books, um, at the moment the bed is set up as a single bed, it could be a king size if I put the centre section in, but otherwise it's always a king, uh, sorry, a single size, single bed. King size in the UK is five foot by six and a half foot, this is five foot by six foot, so a little bit shorter than standard, but yeah, still meets the requirements that the government wants. So, as you can see, plenty of kitchen counter space. I've got a chest table here, and chest pieces inside, some cards, cribbage board, various other bits and pieces. Um, right control for the stereo that I've fitted. We've got hot and cold running water all off the tap. And that's a heated tap so there's no furnace anywhere nothing to worry about on that side we've got induction hobs which I showed you before um, all powered on and off by the switches same with the hot water tap there's a switch over here just switch power on and off so just reach behind here switch off this is an old tall uh, crate I don't know what decade from probably the 40s or 50s and it actually fits some very old jars I found in the house we were clearing out the house I just had to get some new corks for them that one's a bit small so I need to get a slightly larger cork um, yeah they're lovely and the thermometer so doesn't know what temperature it is in here and at the moment in here it is 17 degrees C or about 60, 61, 62 Fahrenheit. It's a little bit worn out, so it's not that easy to tell. But yeah, it's all sort of coming on nicely. Uh, nice full size kitchen sink. The old dressing cabinet that I found down the road that somebody was throwing out, and I just fitted on a little drop down door which was a piece of wood I got from the lumber yard to make it work and then here this is something I built and I need to finish it it's not quite finished yet but this is a rocket mass cooker basically so it's a rocket mass heater but it's also an oven and hob so it works fantastically well uh, give you an idea it's now just gone 12 o'clock I last midday I last lit it um, what time did I light it well the last batch of coal because I'm running it off of coal at the moment because it gives me a little bit longer heat um, but I last had it running or last load of fuel I put in it was 11 o'clock last night so it's been running now 13 hours I lift up the fan. You can see the fan's still turning. <laughs> um, we've done various other bits and pieces. I'm working on the shower. I'm going to pick you up and put you on wobbly cam. So excuse the uh, wobbliness for a moment. But just to show you in here, I also removed the seats. So the camera st st stood on top of this chest of drawers. Under here, 
If I can even show you, we've got a few tools, bits and pieces, and these are the massive batteries for the solar system. And they go right the way back to here. They are colossal. I don't know whether you can see them at all, just about maybe. And they are the full depth, front to back, of the actual system. So there's my washing machine up here. We've got my monitor with a very nice McLaren on it. And I kind of use the washing machine also as a standing desk, so I can do whatever I want on that. Like I said, that's the tile crate with some very old jars in it. I need to do some more bits and pieces. So we've got a load of bits and pieces in there. This piece here, I actually want to set down. I want to adjust it. Um, so it's just on the end there and then we've got another tray like we have over here oh I've got a cloth on the tap at the moment but you get the idea so you've got a tray in there with my spices and various other things flour spaghetti all sorts in there that needs to be fitted up that end and yes there's a bug roll on the side but uh, the toilet roll is there in case I need to blow my nose or something or clean up a spillage or whatever you, my coffee as you can see the bed, the cushion covers here all need to be replaced they are literally on there as a temporary measure my bed obviously the curtains the painting and books and that's the emergency exit door i've actually got to put i've put secondary glazing on most of the windows but i've got to do that one yet and i've got to finish fitting them properly as you can tell just up on the top there i've just put some quadrant up you might be able to see it if i'm moving a bit closer maybe anyway it's um wood effect it's not actually wood because I don't want it rotting you can see it better on that one there you go so I've oh the curtain rails are old uh, old copper pipe that I kind of salvaged it was laying around in the house not being used but the quadrant as you can see on the top there that's bowing down slightly from the top of the window needs to be screwed and fitted properly but I haven't got round to that bit yet obviously there's a sharpening stone next to the hob because I like to sharpen up my knives and a battery on charge for the drill. I've got an old, old converted oil lamp, so it isn't actually an oil lamp, it's actually electric spoon rack. My dinner that I cooked last night, which was stew and dumplings. I've got some left over. And this is the wood burner slash hob. Right, just to show you something else, uh, that pipe is actually a water pipe, runs through into the radiator, the radiator sits just above the wood burner, and I'll show you why in a moment, this is a working oven, I cooked that uh, stew in the oven last night, all homemade, I made it all myself, all the handles, everything, the hinges, everything all welded together myself needs painting needs finishing on the top and the front at the moment but it works superbly well and yes that's a manhole cover for the top the radiator is there basically the water comes along goes into the radiator and where it's sitting just above the manhole cover the air flows up through it and heats the water the water then goes up across the top through that pipe then comes out into the shower area it runs along the back obviously this all needs finishing so there's loads of junk in here at the moment my coal bucket the seat for when i build the composting toilet but the walls are actually made i might change the back wall but as I said, the pipe comes down through here and then that feeds into 
an electric water heater. It doesn't heat up very hot, but it means you don't have to have a cold shower in the summer. Then it comes back up and runs through into the shower head. That shower head is actually designed to be, I'm putting you back on the stand now, that's designed for a garden center or greenhouse, that's it, greenhouse. So where you'd grow all your plants, that's designed to go in there. Oh, I didn't show you. I've also got a mirror up here, which is the old um, rear view mirror from the bus when it used to have a rear window. Um, obviously I didn't take that out, somebody else had took that out, taken that out, sorry. Um, but they'd left the mirror in and I didn't need the mirror so I pondered for months and then a few days ago I decided to put it there because it's really handy in case you need to brush your hair or a woman needs to do makeup or what have you. And you can turn it so you've then got a full length mirror, or not quite full length, but you can certainly see most of yourself to make sure you're okay. But yeah, it's all coming on really nicely. I'm pleased with it. Um, it's very, very comfortable. You know, it's, okay, I've lost four seats out of here. I've still got two in the front. I'm not gonna show you that area at the moment because I've got my shoes and boots and various other bits and pieces and jackets and things which you might have spotted as a panned up to the TV but yeah it's very nice very comfortable I'm very happy with it but um, it's coming along nicely there's a few bits as I say I've got to finish off I've got to do some painting on the outside and I've also got to um, finish all the secondary glazing so this is acrylic glass or whatever you want to call it, clear acrylic like you'd have in a greenhouse or whatever. Um, but yeah, it works very well. It does actually hold in quite a bit more heat than it would without it. It all works very nicely. Curtains slide nicely. Everything, it just works. I don't know, it's lovely. The one thing I would change is I might see if I can get the radiator is okay but it produces rust so I might have to change that because it's not, not really going to work for a shower if I'm getting covered in rust but um, oh yeah the table actually comes off and this chest table that um, I've fitted in here I learned to play chess on it when I was five years old my nan taught me how to play chess so it's got a bit of a sentimental value it's been in here about six months now I love it it's superb um, it wouldn't be any use as a computer table but I've got other plans for that um, I've got another piece of material which I'm going to use to make a slightly larger one have it as a computer table I'm going to move the monitor to just above this point here um, and then I can, you know, do whatever I fancy. I can be sat here using the computer. Um, it all works great. The electrical system is fantastic. The water system works fantastically. I've got a slight leak which I need to sort out, but uh, let's just say. <laughs> It's a case of take it apart and put some PTFE tape around it and then it's sorted. The rest of the system doesn't leak at all. But uh, yeah, it works fantastically well. Yeah, you know, that's all run off of a pump, which is in the boot. Um, I keep the, the fuel for the wood burner, uh, or wood slash coal burner, uh, in the boot. This is a batch box rocket heater, which I, if people are interested, I can give a bit more detail on. But um, yeah, I didn't do any filming of the construction because it is a prototype. I'm not, I'm kind of 90% happy with it. It needs a few bits tweaking. Um, 
for example, I think I cut off the airflow for the secondary air intake, so it could run a little better. Um, but I might have a solution to that. But if I'm running coal, I don't actually want secondary air intake. Um, coal burns a lot longer, so you know it's producing heat for instead of getting six hours heat out of an hour burn, I'm now getting twelve hours heat out of a uh, six hour burn um, because coal burns for six to eight hours. So yeah, I'm. St I mean the temperature. I'm not sure what the temperature is outside at the moment. Let's have a look. Uh, temperature outside. Switch on my location. Tap the button. Let's see what we come up with. It might be easier just to do that one. So I've got. Obviously, like everybody else has on their phone, a weather system, and apparently, according to that, the temperature here at the moment is six degrees. So I'm 11 degrees warmer in here. That's 11 degrees Celsius warmer in the bus than it is outside, which sounds about right. So it's not freezing cold outside, but it's not exactly toasty either. But um, there you go. And obviously I've got my overhead storage, so I've got cups, uh, my Dutch ovens, so these Dutch ovens here, and they are here, all my cooking utilities, uh, all my cooking pans, fry pans, saucepans, the Dutch ovens, they're all cast iron, highly recommend that, um, they are so good. Uh, they work on the induction hob and they work great on the wood burner as well, so brilliant. Um, you can throw them in the oven, you don't have to worry about it, they're absolutely fantastic. You've seen me cooking in one of the other videos, I might cook something else up later, um, in which case I'll probably film it for you, but uh, don't know at the moment, we'll have to see how the day goes. But uh, up here I've also got my tea, coffee, a few sauces. Um, and that's about it. Oh, some custard powder, bits and pieces. Then here I've got some porridge. And this side onwards, I keep my trousers. So I've got trousers and shorts up that side. This side, uh, there's a few bits of junk in there at the moment because I'm still sorting out. Pants and socks, uh, various other bits of clothing that come up to. Yeah, t shirts, shirts, jumpers. And uh, then I've got some carrier bags and my tripods for the camera. But um, yeah, it all works quite well. I'm very pleased with how it all works. I need to, there's a few bits and pieces I need to change and sort out. The cupboards work great. I fitted a little latch on this cupboard door so as I can lock it when it's when I'm driving and it doesn't fling open. The fridge is a household domestic fridge. The washing machine is actually a South African washing machine that the wife and I bought, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago now. It's a top loader, 13 kilos, so it's bigger than pretty much any UK domestic washing machine. It's absolutely huge. The downside of it is where it's designed for a house and it's a top loader takes a huge amount of water to do a full wash on it. Um, unfortunately, a little too much. It's, uh, I think it uses, on a full load, so it's maximum filled, it's 100 and, no, hang on, no it's not, it's about 75, 80 gallons of water that it takes to run it, so but then it does a wash cycle and two rinse cycles. The two rinse cycles aren't really necessary. Um, and most, if you buy a twin tub, so you've got a washer and the spinner, then they only do a single wash cycle. They don't rinse it. And you put it in the spin dryer and that just drains off the water. So I'm gonna start trying to do that my water tank is 50 gallons. That's uh, imperial gallons, not US gallons. US gallons is 60 gallons. Camera cut out for a moment there, so. But anyway, 
uh, that takes about 75 to 80 on a full wash. If I do it on a just a wash without doing the rinse cycle, same as on the twin tub, then I should only be using about 25 gallons. So I'm going to have to test it, see how it works out. Um, if it's no good, then obviously I might have to change the washing machine. But it's nice having it in there. Added bonus is. I can use it as a laundry basket, so any washing I've got goes straight in there when I've got full load to do a wash. Nice and straightforward. Um, drying it at the moment, I've got a couple of options which I'm considering. Um, one, for the summer, I've, I've also got access to, in the house, a tumble dryer, which is, I don't know how old. It's got to be 50 or 60 years old. It works perfectly. Um, it's a lot smaller than a standard pump, tumble dryer, but it seems to take about, uh, I would say, probably about four or five kilo load. So it's a reasonable size. Obviously it takes three loads to do um, a full load out of this washing machine. But um, I'm considering having a look, seeing if potentially I could put it in here just in front of where the monitor currently is because I'm going to be moving the monitor anyway so that's fine um, but we'll have to have a look and see on that one I don't really know and I would only be able to use it when I've got the available power obviously so don't know we'll see on that but um, it works great it doesn't need a vent outside it's not a condensing one um, it's a very strange old tumble dryer. Um, the air blows out through the front of the door and that's how it dries the clothes. Uh, obviously sucks it in from the back, blows it out the front. So that's fine. Uh, added bonus is it would be reusing the heat. Downside would be it would be a little bit damp but in if I'm on hookups and I'm using the wood burner it won't matter the wood burner will dry out the air anyway. So that shouldn't be a problem. But um, yeah, the whole system works fantastically well. Um, what else can I tell you? Not a lot really. It's, yeah, I don't know. The, you know, I've got plenty of electricity in the summer. I just need a few more solar panels. Um, I've increased my battery capacity dramatically. I'm now up to, uh, I think it worked out Sorry, I'm just trying to work it out. I've got so the batteries I showed you under there. That's 225 amp hours at 24 volts, and then I've got another 400. Uh, let me see. No, it's 280 amps underneath the bus at 24 volts. So I'm now up to well, just over 500 amp hours at 24 volts uh, compared to most vehicles they would be running on 12 volts so that means I've got 1200 amp hours of battery storage just for the living side that's excluding the motor batteries so I've got 1200 amp hours at 24 volts or uh, that 12 volts sorry but I'm running at 24 so it's 605 actually um, amp hours so massive amount of battery storage but um, yeah obviously Need a few so more solar panels just to get through the winter and things, but uh, yeah, so that's one of the big changes I've yet to make. I'm going to get some rigid panels, and I'll, I've got the flexible panels on the roof at the moment, two of which I need to move, and how the hell I'm going to get them off the roof, I don't know, but anyway, I think I'm going to move them, um, but they're sealed on with some stuff called tiger seal so getting that off is going to be an absolute sod but uh yeah we'll figure it out somehow don't know how yet but we'll do it um and then i'll basically put one solar panel here and another solar panel down the bottom there and that will boost there'll be rigid panels the rigid panels the reason why i'm going with the rigid this time instead of the flexible is plain and simply the rigids will shade the roof so when in the weather's very hot as it was in the summer 
in the summer it was reaching about 40 degrees in here with the roof open which put it in perspective that would be around about 105 Fahrenheit so it was ridiculously hot in here and that's in England uh, we don't get that hot it reached 27 outside it was a hundred as I say it was 40 degrees inside um, with the roof open so if I put the rigid panels on it should shade the roof a little bit and thereby hopefully I should not get too much in the way of um, heat build up in here because obviously there'll be an airflow underneath the panels and it should keep the roof a little cooler but uh, well I don't know I've got to make the framework they don't exactly build a roof rack for this vehicle it's a Mercedes Varia and uh, yeah it's basically a commercial vehicle they don't build roof racks for these so I've got to make it but uh, we'll figure it out um, unless of course anyone wants to sponsor me and stick provide me with a roof rack I'm quite happy to advertise it <laughs> but yeah it's uh, all good good fun but uh, yeah it's working out well anyway thank you for watching and uh, if I don't do a video on me cooking something later which I might do I don't know uh, I hope you enjoyed the video like subscribe and uh, we'll see you soon hopefully as long as I pull my finger out and do another video soon <laughs> but yeah otherwise we'll see you soon thank you bye